so this is going to be a tutorial video on how to build a mega cheap Steam in home streaming machine that you'll be able to hook up to your TV and hook up the Steam controller and play some games on TV at you know 1080p 60fps. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to wherever you work or go to school and you want to beg people to give you one of their crappy machines from 10 years ago. And you want them to give you something like this, like an Optiplex 780 or a 755. They'll come with either a uh, an, a an ATI 2400 or an NVIDIA 9300M. Not M. No, it's not M. Just 9300. I think that's what this is. So, what the first thing you want to do is pretty much replace that with something way better. In my case, I have an OEM GTX 745. What's nice about this is that it has HDMI out, and of course, because it's a newer GPU, it can properly do the video encoding on the GPU instead of the CPU. So you wanna you wanna dig out your your bag of processors. And you want to find Core 2 Quad or Xeon. You really want to find the fastest thing you can for the best price you can. So I went with a Q9400 for $15. Really about the best thing you could get is an X3370 Xeon. But I've there's rarely any of them on eBay. And when I've seen them, they're like 50 bucks, So not really worth it. If you actually want to run games on this machine, this is actually not too bad of a setup. You could even put something like a, like the 750 Ti, the single slot one. I'm not sure if that'll fit. You can get rid of this big hard drive and stick in like an SSD. Or just any 2.5 inch drive and you get more room over here for something like a 1050 Ti low profile. Or any sort of dual slot card you could just sort of jerry ring in there. This also makes an excellent uh, Hackintosh. Sort of a cheapo mac mini or something hey i'm going to actually install steam os because i've never installed steam os on anything and it looks kind of cool if i install steam os on this it's going to be much more like a console a more seamless experience that just kind of works where i boot it up i'm in the steam interface already immediately I'm hoping that's what it's going to be. I don't, I don't know. I've never even looked at that. I don't even know what SteamOS looks like, to be honest. So I'm just going to stick this in here because I don't have any SSDs to use for it. And just like that, there's a hard drive in here. Oh my goodness, this is going to short everything out. I'm going to need my, uh, my USB drive that has SteamOS on it. Press F12. That's prop. Hey! Hey! Boot to the USB device. Please. Well, it got nice and quiet. Select EFI. What? Do you need a UF? What the heck? What kind of Linux do you need a UEFI BIOS to, to boot into? What kind of stupid crap is that? Once you've discovered that life is futile and you're never going to be able to get SteamOS installed on your crappy Dell. You just uh, wait for uh, the, the bundle of the Steam controller and the Steam Link to be $50 again on sale. And you just get that. And then you do this. Oh. 
Oh, that's a nice artifact. And if you want to play Fallout 4 with your SLI 1070s over the network to your TV with a Steam controller, you can do that. Let me just go, go sit on my couch and let's, uh, let's see how this works. If there's any latency and all that. There's some definite, oh yeah, some definite latency. Um, I'm not really sure how much of that is just Fallout 4, because it kind of always just has that. And how much of it's the TV, and how much of it's the network. In fact, it's all, it's all of those things kind of combined. And I get really, really bad... Oh man, the FPS looking at this door is horrible. It's extremely stuttery. If I look over here, it's not so bad. If I look at that door, it's really awful. Compression artifacts are really bad. It's really laggy. <sighs> well... I suppose that uh, once you've lost all hope and realize that even the Steam Link can't save you, the best course of action is to not have ever bought any of this in the first place, and to go out, I don't know, go on eBay and find something nice and used, just go out and buy a PS4. So anyway, you buy a PS4 Pro, you get a way better controller that feels awesome in the hand, you get no more input lag, because you're not streaming through your crappy router. Actually, I'm not streaming through my crappy router, that was streaming through like a thousand dollar business grade switch that I got on eBay for real cheap, um, with gigabit speeds anyway, so... I'm playing this one-handed, by the way, so I'm gonna look horrible. There's no input lag. It's brilliant. The graphics are fantastic. It looks great. And this is probably not even running as well as it could. Why? Why bother? Just, you know, if you want to play on the couch with a controller, it's so futile trying to get the the PC to do it. It's just, it, it doesn't work. It's a pain in the butt. Or if it does work, it, it's not, it's not that it doesn't work. It's that it works horribly and is really annoying. Sort of half working is a lot worse than just not working because it's got to annoy you all the time. It either works perfectly or it doesn't. If you're not first, you're last. So... I mean, again, I understand that consoles, like, the value proposition of, like, hardware per dollar may not really be there compared to building a PC, but if you're going to sit on the couch with the controller, this is a way better experience than the PC. It just is. I'm sorry. It just is. I love PCs, okay? Like... For, for playing at a desk with a mouse and keyboard, it's perfect. And you get a lot more performance per your butt per your dollar, usually, generally. But for the living room, this is better. I'm sorry, but this is better. I mean, I know, I know you really tried, Valve. You tried with this thing. And, and it almost works. Almost.